The U.S. could lift sanctions on Russia in exchange for a nuclear arms reduction deal. That's what Donald Trump said during his first interview with the British media since winning the U.S. presidential election in November. Trump said, quote, let's see if we can make some good deals with Russia, adding that in his opinion, nuclear weapons should be reduced. All right, RT's uh, Anastasia Cherkina now joining me live from London with more details on uh, the latest Trump interviewer. Anastasia, good to see you. A possible lifting of sanctions in exchange for a nuclear arms reduction deal. It seems that Trump is quickly starting to tackle some major issues then. Well, Rory, indeed, uh, in his first ever UK exclusive interview to the Times, uh, Donald Trump did in fact talk about the lifting of sanctions on Russia in exchange for a nuclear arms uh, deal. And we have to say that, of course, um, last year Russia did suspend its uh, nuclear deal with the U.S., citing the U.S. sanctions against Russia over Ukraine as the reason. At the time, we do know that Russia said the threat to strategic stability posed by the hostile actions of the U.S. against against Russia and the inability of the U.S. to deliver on the obligation to dispose of excessive weapons plutonium under international treaties were what forced Russia's hand. But, you know, speaking of this, we have to keep in mind that, of course, uh, outgoing U.S. President Barack Obama also did uh, talk lots and lots about resetting ties with Russia, the so-called famous Pirizagruska, and obviously this is not how things have played out. So we're going to have to wait and see if these indications become actual promises. Now, it's important when, then it, when it comes to this interview where Donald Trump Trump did certainly uh, seem to be favorable towards Russia in many ways and much more sympathetic, of course, than no. the outgoing uh, Obama administration. The media headlines, of course, did their job as usual. Some of the headlines include Trump condemns Russian military campaign in Syria and says Putin's nuclear arsenal should be reduced, sort of playing it out like he was uh, condemning the Russian president moreover than indicating that things are likely to see a thaw. Now, uh, we have to say that, of course, another important topic of discussion was the issue of uh, the state of the EU. Donald Trump did point out that he does uh, favor Brexit and that he does uh, foresee similar actions around the EU. He was quite critical of Angela Merkel policy toward immigration. He did say that that's what caused Brexit and uh, that the issue of more and more people coming to the EU is certainly a burning one and he did call that a mistake of hers. And uh, certainly hailing Brexit, this is what uh, Donald Trump had to say. Let's take a listen. I think Brexit's going to end up being a great thing. People don't want to have other people coming in and destroying their country. I thought the UK was so smart in getting out. And of course, uh, what uh, another thing that Donald Trump had become famous for in this past week was talking about fake news at his first ever press conference. And this is something that he touched upon again in this interview, where he basically said he expects an apology uh, about the uh, compromising fake news that were released, released on him in the now uh, notorious dossier that was highly publicized in the media last week. All right, Artis. Anastasia Cherkina, thank you. Now, Donald Trump also criticized NATO in his latest interview. He reiterated his claims that the alliance is obsolete and failing to effectively fight terror. His stance on NATO could have implications for relations with Moscow. Russia views as hostile the long-term NATO military games close to its border. And just last week, America deployed the biggest number of soldiers in Europe since the end of World War II as part of Operation Atlantic Resolve. Over 3,000 American troops arrived in Poland. Almost 3,000 tanks and other armored vehicles there as well. The operation has been praised by NATO, which has released videos of families and children welcoming the troops. Though there also have been plenty of protests. We discussed the president-elect's stance on NATO and his view on relations with Russia with several political analysts. Here's what they had to say. What I like about it is that he stated in very clear language that the NATO organization is obsolete, that it's very old, uh, that it was built and designed 
for uh, a, a previous era that no longer exists. Uh, and also in the interview, he talked about how it was ineffective. It was, it was not geared to today's challenges, today's security challenges um, globally or in Europe. So he's, he's making some statements which from my perspective are, he's stating the obvious. And what's radical about it is nobody does that. So it's, it's very exciting. From a strategic point of view, very smart politically uh, by Donald Trump to mention uh, the nuclear arms issue. And uh, this is really sort of a big set piece, uh, one that was really prominent uh, during the Cold War years and was uh, used to great effect. You're not going to get much opposition uh, domestically or internationally from a reduction in nuclear arms. I think generally the public see that as a positive thing, uh, no matter who you're polling on that issue. So uh, it's a way of diffusing some of the anti Russian uh, rhetoric. And and hysteria that's kind of taken over uh, U.S. politics at the moment uh, and sort of put that, put a damper on that and then move things into a more constructive uh, bilateral diplomatic direction. And renowned journalist, filmmaker and author John Pilger also gave us his view on the future of U.S.-Russia relations. All the noises he's made suggest that he wants to do a deal with Russia. Uh, that makes a lot of sense from everyone's point of view. Um, there's a great deal of pressure on him not to do that. He seems to be resisting it. But all this is speculation. Isn't it a disgrace that in 2017, we're all held to hostage to what the, the President of the United States is about to do, when in fact the world is changing? Well, we all know it's nonsense. They know it's nonsense. The people asking the questions know it's nonsense. Um, the people who are running the utility in Vermont knew it was nonsense. And it was one of those rare times the Washington Post had to say, we've just published nonsense. It was just the other day that Donald Trump was doing his first uh, U.S. Pre press conference as a U.S. president-elect. How has it got, John, to the stage where the president-elect is calling CNN, a respected news outlet, um, a terrible organization and, quote, fake news i think i think the fact that he called cnn a respected news outlet is the most extraordinary thing i wouldn't regard them as a respected news outlet since i've been uh, uh, a journalist during uh, cnn's time i've never regarded them as respected i've always regarded most things they've said as extremely doubtful i'm not sure what trump trump is but he worries them because uh, they didn't get their woman in place. He worries them because he doesn't come from inside that milieu. Trump is actually the embod embodiment of uh, modern, powerful America. But that still puts him outside the State Department, outside the CIA, even outside his own party. And what worries them most of all is that he might recklessly go around the world and make peace with countries like Russia. Well, Europe has become a kind of obsequious, hasn't it? I mean, to see the European Parliament in Strasbourg, which once came up with some quite good liberal initiatives long ago, to see it trying to copy this anti-propaganda legislation, laying down rules of what is truth and what isn't truth, is really pathetic. My final question to you, if you could send one message to the U.S. President-elect Donald Trump for his next years in the White House, what message would you send to the U.S. President-elect? Leave the rest of the world alone. Leave it alone. A Russian dubbed version of a new highly anticipated episode of the British crime drama series Sherlock has been leaked online before its first official airing. And the BBC, which owns the rights to show Sherlock, says it will carry out a full investigation. However, some already believe they know who was behind the leak.